atihei mauri ora, ana ko tēnei tuake nei, te tahara o tōku pāpa no te ai, no tūhoi, te aroa te tahara o tōku whaea, no te ai tanga mahaki, a rongo whakāta, a nei rā ko tōku ingoa, ko rākau o te ora, te maipi. No reira, tihei mauri ora, tihei uri uri, tihei nako nako, ka tau hao whakatau, ko rangi nui a tui ho nei, ka tau hao whakatau, ko papa tuanuku, e takoto nei, ka tau hao whakatau, ko te mātuku mai, i rara tonga, koi a i rukuhia mana wa pau rata, koi a i rukuhia mana wa pau aho, Whaka tina, kia tina, te mori i Hawaiki, hea pupu ana, hea wawau na hoki tā rewa, tu i te rangi. Heke pānuku, heke tangaroa, whana whana, hara mai te toki, haumi e, hui e, taiki e. Kia ora, I'm Bruce. I'm the supervisor of the Waikanae treatment plant. Once we start treating the water, Lots of processes happen. From the river to the raw water pumps, up to the rapid mix where the coagulation happens. From the rapid mix to the clarifier where the flocculation happens and the separation. Then we go to the filters and then on through the UV light where all the remaining pathogens are rendered harmless and then into the clear well where the high lift pumps send them up to the reservoir, ready for the pipes that go down into your houses. It takes about three hours to take the water and treat it through the plant and put it into the clear well where we pump it up to the reservoirs. And it takes about two days from the reservoirs down to your house. Kia ora tato. I'm here on behalf of the iwi o Te Atiawa ki Whakarongatai. The water comes from Ranginui down here onto Papa Tuanuku it flows from here out to the sea and to Tangaroa, which Tangaroa turns it around and Tawhiri Mātea, the god of winds, comes and blows it up into the air and it starts all over again. But if we don't look after it, um, if we don't protect this precious Tonga here, it'll be no good for any, anyone to use. He Tonga te wai, water is their treasure. He piko he oranga, at every corner of the river, there was health purposes. Right, let's go up and have a look at the intake. This is where we take the water from the river. All the area that you can see and beyond into the hills is a catchment area for this river. Rain falls onto the land and runs into streams and then into the river. This river supplies most of the water for the 35,000 people in Waikanae, Paraparaumu and Raumati. Okay, it's our job here to take the water from the river and make it safe to drink. So can you just take as much water as you like? No. We get legal permission, and this is called a resource consent. So how much water can you take? Our resource consent is based on how much water we leave in the river. Our consent allows us to take 23 million litres per day. That's twice the amount of our largest reservoir. This is 266 litres per second. So it's 266 of these every second. How do you get the water out of the river? Down in that shed there's two very big pumps that are capable of pumping 400 litres of water per second. From there the water is pumped up into the rapid mix. Down in the river there's a wedge wire that stops fish and large stones getting into the pumps. Okay here we have the rapid mix. So the water's come up from the river here and it goes into these chambers and this is where we add our chemicals and they get mixed in going over this weir. If you look down here on this grey pipe, you'll see the chemicals coming into the water. And then if you turn around behind you and have a look at this aluminium cover, underneath this cover here is great big mixers in the water. And that mixes, again, all the chemicals into the water thoroughly. What kind of chemicals do you add? We add the coagulant because we're trying to get rid of the negative charge the dirt has. And this will allow the dirt to stick together. Then we also add the polyelectrolyte, which is like long strings, long chains. So when the dirt's stuck together, they'll stick on these chains, and then later on in the clarifier, they'll drop out and separate. We also add carbon, and carbon is mainly for removing the toxins from the algae blooms that happen here in the summertime. So that they, they can be harmful to dogs and give us bad taste in our water. 
Yeah, that sounds like a lot of chemicals in our drinking water. It does sound like a lot, but you've got to remember that every time that we put chemicals in at this stage, we take it out. So this doesn't end up as the end product. This is just all part of the process of cleaning the water. Okay, this is what we call a centriflock clarifier. So I've explained to you about what we've done over here in the rapid mix. We've mixed all the chemicals together. Now we need them to react. So they come, they come down underneath the clarifier and come up and to form flocks. And flocks are where the dirt starts attracting to each other and sticking together. When they stick together, then they become a flock. This part of the process is called flocculation. What we want to happen here is the flocks get that heavy that they'll drop to the bottom of the clarifier, which is a separation process. What are all those big lumps of stuff? OK, that's the carbon doing its job, and that's taking all the toxins and stuff out of the water to make the water taste nicer. You've got to remember now that everything you see here is not the water that's going to be at the end of the process. So it's just doing its job, separating all the bad stuff away from the water. The water from here goes through those channels over there and then through to the filters. After they come down these channels, they get distributed evenly to these four dual media rapid sand filters. After the water travels through these sand filters, we've removed 99.99% of all the pathogens. What happens to the last bit? The last bit gets taken care of with either the chlorine or the UV. So what's a pathogen? A pathogen is either viruses or bacteria or anything else that sort of makes you sick. This is where the water passes through high intensity UV light, where any remaining pathogens are rendered harmless to humans. The UV light stops the pathogens being able to reproduce. The water isn't changed at all through this process. OK, from this stage on, we put chemicals in the water that we want to stay in the water, like fluoride, chlorine and lime. Does anyone know anything about chlorine? Doesn't it kill the germs? That's right. We put the chlorine in the water to kill any viruses or bacteria. We also add the fluoride for dental health and the lime for pH correction. We try and let the pH go out between 7.8 and 8. This helps the water not be aggressive, so therefore it doesn't attack the pipe work and looks after our infrastructure. Could you make a mistake and put too many chemicals in our water? No, we have lots of measures in place to stop this happening. Uh, the first thing is the operators every day check our instruments for accuracy and also we have alarms on those instruments and if they were to go out of range they would send an alarm out and shut the whole plant down until we could come in and fix the problem. The health department checks on us regularly and gives us a grading. The Waikanae Water Treatment Plant is a double A status so therefore you won't get sick drinking our water from here. Okay. We're standing over one million litres of finished water. That's our finished water flowing into the clear well tank. <laughs> this is a Rewai Street reservoir holding approximately 12 million litres of water. Morning, I'm Brian. I'm going to be testing the water from the tap here and taking a sample back to the lab. It's one of about 140 taps around the Kapiti coast. We go round to each of our sampling sites once every two weeks. We test for pH, chlorine residual and the clarity of the water. The information is available to the health department. We send the large sample off to an accredited laboratory to check for pathogens. What happens to the dirt you took out of the water just up there? OK, all the dirt from the plant ends up in this tank here and just like the clarifier all the dirt will drop down and go to the bottom of this tank then it goes up to this black tank here where all the solids will drop into the bottom of that black tank and the overflow goes back into this tank here so it's going round and round until the solids drop out when the solids build up in that black tank then I have to get a local firm to come and they take it to the landfill no dirt goes back into the river at all this is the Altaki treatment plant. The water from the bores is pumped up through pipes where it is monitored, pH corrected and also chlorinated. It travels through a UV unit and then out through pipework to Otaki businesses 
and households. This is the Paikokariki water treatment plant. The water for this plant comes from the Wainui stream and a shallow bore beside the stream. The water is blended and travels through pipes where it's chlorinated and then through a microfiltration unit and then through our UV. After the UV it's sent through high lift pumps up to the reservoir. From the reservoir it travels through pipes down to businesses and households in the Paikokariki community. We have six bores 70 metres down that go into the ground into the aquifer or underneath the river. The aquifer is fed by water seeping through the land and into the underground river. The water from the aquifer is 400 years old and it has more minerals in it than the water from the Waikanae River. It is harder water. All the water is pumped from the bore heads all the way to the treatment plant where some pre-treatment is done to the water to remove iron and manganese and then it's blended with river water until the river gets down to a level where we have to use the bore water in its entirety. After treatment through our Waikanae treatment plant, the bore water meets all regulations and is safe to drink. We do not use the bore water to supplement the river water very often. In the summer of 2010 to 11, we used bore water one 24 hour period. It provided 20% of our water over that time. In the summer of 2009-10, we did not use the bore water at all. Cheers!